Hello YouTube and welcome to the first in a new series of The Running News. This is a show that intends to bring the top running stories of the time directly to your YouTube feed. Before we get started, please hit the subscribe button and make sure you click the bell for notifications of when new videos are launched and smash that like button. Okay, first story up for today is the sad cancellation or postponement of the Berlin Marathon. So the Berlin Marathon 2020 is set to be cancelled. It does appear the German government have extended their ban on group gatherings until the end of October, which has sadly meant the Berlin Marathon is gonna be cancelled or possibly postponed. The organizers have yet to state which of those two it's going to be, but I think it's very clear that towards the end of the year, there's gonna be a mass of those very high level marathon events going on. And it's probably quite unlikely that they will be able to fit it in sometime around then. I think we all remember the amazing performance from Bekele at last year's Berlin Marathon, where he was only a few seconds away from breaking Elliot Kipchoge's marathon record. I think many, many runners were really excited to see just how well Bekele was gonna do in this marathon. So it's really disappointing. It's a really bitter blow. That Berlin Marathon is one of the fastest out there and it always seems to attract that excitement. It really seems to inspire a lot of enthusiasm. Let's hope that the momentum that Kipchoge and Bekele can be continued on despite the troubles that we've got right now in the world. Not just their momentum either. All the non-elite runners, people that have been training really hard over the last few months, Let's just hope that we can get back out there very soon and see what we can do with those personal bests. Obviously, we've got to try and find a safe route, navigate through the difficult times right now. We've got to be strong, stay together. That leads me on to story two though, garden running. Lots of people have been taking part in some fantastic events they've organized themselves in their own gardens. Some people also doing some virtual events. I know Seth the Moore had a fantastic virtual event at the weekend where people were doing all sorts of different distances. It's absolutely brilliant to see so many people getting excited about running, hitting some of their personal best. It doesn't matter though, even if you didn't, if you're just getting out there and doing it, that's what it's all about. One particular guy that inspired me over here in the UK is a chap called Mike Reed. He set himself a goal to complete not just a marathon, but an ultra marathon in his back garden. 100 kilometers, Mike's aiming to do, I think it's about 4,000 laps of his garden course. All for a good cause as well. He's raising money for Zoe's Place, Baby Hospice. Only thing he's really worried about by the looks of it is the sort of confined course that he's got to navigate. At least he won't have any problems getting lost or anything like that. He won't do a, a Wormsley and run miles out of the way. <laughs> he might perhaps have some garden furniture to navigate, maybe a slide. Gotta be careful for badgers though, I should assume. I will place up Mike's charity event in the description. So if you've got any spare credits, please pass them his way to help out in his efforts. I'll certainly be making a small donation. I think he's really inspiring. What a great thing to do. I'm not sure I have the mental <laughs> willpower to do that though. And my garden's really small. That reminds me, I did promise the wife that I'd strim the garden today. It's not happening. I'm prepared to take the fallout from that one. I just, I'm not motivated to do that in any way. I don't think Mike's gonna have to mow his lawn anytime soon though. If he's gonna do 4,000 laps, there aren't gonna be any grass left there at all. Good luck to you, Mr. Reed. If you know of any other runners doing some charitable stuff, please let me know so that I can put out their information to you in the next running news. I'm gonna try and do bad news, good news, bad news, good news, that kind of thing. So story three is that of shoe delays. As you well know, with the virus around the world at the moment, it's becoming increasingly difficult to be able to launch new shoe products new models of new shoes. Seems like it's really tough. Even actually fulfilling some of the orders is getting quite difficult. That's understandable. We've got to prioritize so that people get medicines and food and sustenance they need to keep going. But certainly for those shoe freaks like myself, I was really disappointed to see the Adidas Adi Zero Pro fall again down the release schedule. Originally, I saw it was up for release in the middle of April. It slipped to the end of April, then the middle of May, and then now it's the end of May. I think they've slated a 31st of May release for that one now. There's two colorways. One is in coral black and the other's in glory blue. Not sure which of those I like better. I, I don't seem to have many blue shoes, um, but with Adidas, I think going back to the Samba reminds me of being about nine or 10 
playing football, it's got to be the black and white Adidas. That's the kind of classic, it's the cult classic colorway. It reminds me of scuffing my school trousers and my mum having to sort of darn up holes in there. We had full football tournaments when we were at school. At lunchtime there was a, there was a league. I remember one guy used to keep all the scores and everything. It was very well organised. Which of those two colourways do you prefer of the Adi Zero Pro? Let me know down in the comments. A question I'm getting asked all the time by the viewers at the moment is... Ed, when are the Alpha Flies going to be released? I have to say guys, I have absolutely no idea when these are going to be re-released. It's all gone very quiet on that front. And on the tempo as well, the tempo next percent. There's just no news whatsoever. Not even any pairs of those shoes have appeared anywhere on the resale site. There's pairs of these up on StockX for like a thousand pounds. It's just insane. I'm glad I picked my pair up for a much more reasonable price than that. If I do hear any news about the release of the Alpha Fly or the Tempo Next Percent, you guys will be the first to know. Story four though brings me to some good news of a new running shoe release. So very, very soon, Nike are set to release their new iteration of the Pegasus shoe. The Pegasus 37. This one's a real firm running favourite. This one's a real firm running favourite. Certainly for me over the past few years, the Pegasus line is one that I always seem to get attracted to, like a moth to a lamp. There are some significant changes though in this new version of the Pegasus. It's no longer a full zoom air unit, it's now a air unit only in the front of the shoe. It's apparently double the size of the one that was in the previous iteration. Perhaps a little bit of a nod to the Alpha Fly with the AirPods in the sort of forefoot area of the shoe. That Cushlon foam is gone and they've replaced it with React, same as we've had in the Infinity Run, the Zoom Fly 3, the Terra Kyger 5, the Pegasus Turbo 2. You get the picture, it's in all of them. Interestingly, the women's and men's airbags are going to be different pressures. So, where women have been testing the shoe out, they've said that they wanted a not so brutal feeling in the forefoot. They wanted a slightly more mellowed out feeling. I think the air pressure in the pod there is going to be 15 PSI, which incidentally is the same pressure that you would get in a pressure cooker. And then 20 PSI in the men's version of the shoe. Apparently you can even drop an egg onto the air unit and the egg will survive completely intact. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to try that. Eggs are far too much of a precious item at the moment. And also it means that my wife wouldn't be able to make any cakes if they broke. We've had a really nice run of cakes recently. Every Saturday she's been making a new cake. We've had lemon, orange, have one with gooseberries. Oh, sorry, I digress. So I'm really pleased to see there's a new running shoe coming out very soon. Something we've not had our hands on before with some quite considerable changes there as well. Let's hope there's some awesome colorways on initial release. It won't be as awesome as my hot rod colorway though. I did let Kafuzi know as well, it is possible on the Nike by You site to make a completely blackout version of the shoe, so he's all right. I'm sure that that alone will bring him back to test the Pegasus out. I know it's one of his favorites. That's all the running news for this week. I'll be back next week with another episode. We haven't had a musical interlude for a while, so let's sort that out. I've recently been listening to this fantastic album from a Malian band called Tinarwian. This one's called Aman Iman. Apparently, Tinawian are kind of like the Malian version of the Rolling Stones. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce some of the names of the songs here. They are all in a different language. I just particularly like the instrumentation and the mood and atmosphere generated by the group. There's some fantastic, almost hypnotic kind of guitar riffs. A brilliant sound, in fact, for running. If you want to keep yourself nice and calm, keep that heart rate really low, the sounds generated by the group are just fantastic. They've produced lots of different albums, and even recently the American songwriter Kurt Vile appeared on one of their albums. So do check them out. Tanawian, this album's called Aman Iman. Okay, that's all for me for today, guys. Thanks for tuning in, I really do appreciate it. Please hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications of when new videos are launched. Hit the like button, comment below about any of the stories in today's running news, Make sure you share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.